When you begin your Pokemon journey, you get to pick a Pokemon to start off by your side. But let's be real, as cute and cuddly as your Pokemon is when you first get them, the end goal is to watch them grow up and evolve into their final form. But not every final evolution is created equally, and our starter Pokemon vary quite a bit when it comes to how strong they can become. So today we ask, which starter Pokemon final evolutions are truly ferocious, and which ones never got the glow up that the others did? I'm Kyle with Pokebench. And this is Starter Pokemon Final Evolutions Weak to Powerful. Let's start off with the worst of the worst, the Pokemon who are outclassed in pretty much every way. These are the Duds. This category is quite small with only three entries. And we hate to do it, but we're starting off with the series mascot who everyone loves. Pikachu, along with Raichu, take the title of weakest starter line. Pikachu's Pokedex entry states that its pent-up energy has force equal to a lightning bolt, but its lower special attack stat of 50 leaves much to be desired. It doesn't help that the Pikachu you get as a starter is unable to evolve, leaving it with a pathetic base stat total of 320, even after receiving a buff in X and Y. For those not in the know, that's the same base stat total as the Alola starter trio in their base forms. It does get the unique light ball item, doubling its offensive stats when held, but due to its dependence on an item to hit hard, there are plenty of Pokemon that can hit harder when holding a choice band or life orb. This item also does nothing to improve Pikachu's terrible bulk, with a pathetic 35 HP, 40 defense, and 50 special defense. Luckily, things got better for Pikachu as a starter in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, giving it several unique and powerful moves and boosting its stats to a point where it can use those moves somewhat effectively. That said, these changes don't mean all too much, since the Let's Go games are very easy and don't have much of a competitive scene. All that said, it is technically possible to evolve your starter Pikachu in yellow by trading it away and having the other player use a Thunderstone on it, but there isn't really much reason to do this, as people with versions other than yellow can find a Pikachu in the wild, and besides, Raichu has never been a very good choice for competitive play. Raichu is sort of Pikachu's older, more disappointing big brother. Sorry Pikachu, we still love you, but just stick to being an adorable mascot. Our silver medal for Dud starter Pokemon comes in the form of Meganium. While it can blunt the fighting spirit of foes with its aroma, Meganium has barely anything suited for combat. It suffers a bit from its only somewhat good stats being its defensive stats, and even then, its HP isn't all that great. Its poor move pool leaves it extremely passive, meaning that while it may spend a decent amount of time on the field, it won't be spending that time well. The problem becomes even worse when you consider how many weaknesses Grass-type Pokemon naturally have. Even an unevolved Pokemon like Tangela or Ferroseed is capable of doing a better job. Poor Meganium has been stuck as unusable, even compared to other bottom-tier Pokemon for three generations in a row. Slowly strolling up to receive our bronze medal of badness is the continent Pokemon, Torterra. Its Pokedex entries have never described it as much of a fighter, despite its high attack stat of 109. And even with such power, it ends up falling behind due to its low speed, leaving it open to attack. While it can take a hit, it suffers from many common weaknesses such as fire, flying, and especially ice. Torterra will practically melt whenever it's hit by an ice beam from anything with a decent special attack stat. It isn't without some advantages though, as it can hit really hard with moves like Earthquake and Woodhammer. Plus, its moveset is versatile enough that it can do a variety of jobs. But unfortunately, these strengths end up being undermined by Torterra's glaring weaknesses. Now that we've gotten through the worst of the worst, it's time to go over Pokemon that, while they still have problems, have something that lets them stand above our previous category. Still, they are kind of weak. Ranking high enough to escape the bottom three is Inteleon, the secret agent Pokemon. This Pokemon is capable of gliding through the air and can shoot water out of its fingertips at Mach 3. Unfortunately, its job as a water type special attacker is done better by Pokemon that won't go down the moment something looks at it funny. Inteleon is a glass cannon through and through, but unlike previous entries, Inteleon might have a chance to KO something. It's kind of situational, but you could have an Inteleon with Shadow Ball or Dark Pulse to snipe an unsuspecting opponent. It also has the advantage of being tied 
tied for the fastest non-legendary non-mega Pokemon, so learn both Reflect and Light Screen. So it could set those up and then get KO'd. It has barely better defensive stats than Alakazam, who also gets both of those moves, but the strategy is probably more useful in double battles, where you have twice the Pokemon to protect on the field at the same time. In addition, its abilities are rather poor since one relies on luck, while the other relies on taking a hit. Inteleon has many things it can do, but the things that it can't do really cripple it. Moving from one sharpshooter to another, Decidueye never misses a shot, at least in theory. In reality, while it can not and fire an arrow in a tenth of a second, its actual speed is quite poor. Its offensive stats are balanced, and its move pool is vast enough to give it some variety in the way it's played. Although it has much better defense than Inteleon, it's still quite poor on the physical side, which meshes badly with its low speed and causes it to go down before it can do much damage if its opponent's a good physical attacker. There are also plenty of slower Pokemon that can tank Decidueye's attacks. It doesn't help that its abilities are rather situational which leaves it stuck pretty low in our ranking, but not at the bottom. For our best of the bad, so to speak, Samurott makes its way out of the bottom five. Samurott is capable of sheathing and drawing its blade in the blink of an eye, and one swing of this sword can fell an opponent. In gameplay, this translates to having low speed and lower attack than special attack. That's not to say it's a bad physical attacker though, because Samurott's stats are actually pretty balanced. It has okay bulk with good offense, only weakened by its poor speed, and it also has a varied move pool. But despite all these pros, allowing it to fit many niches, it really doesn't excel in any of them. Anything Samurott can do, another Pokemon can do better. It can be used to make opponents guess which set you're using, but that is a fairly low reward for the risk involved. While Shell Armor can be useful as an ability, it's still doing nothing 15 out of 16 times Samurott gets hit. But it's all uphill from here, with this rather encompassing category of Pokemon that aren't particularly good or bad, just sort of middle of the road. From ending a category with a Unova starter to starting a category with another, we have Embor. It's said to be a master of fast and powerful fighting moves. While the second part is definitely true, the first part is debatable since Embor itself is slow and its only priority move is Sucker Punch. While it can hit hard, it can't hit often since Embor is a glass cannon with good HP, attack, and special attack, but otherwise bad stats. Its ability, Reckless, increases the powers of its recoil moves by 20%, which combines with low speed to mean Embor is capable of easily defeating an opponent before itself going out. Just make sure to watch out for anything that doesn't go down in one hit. Alleged to be unmatched in a jungle environment, next up is Sceptile. An agile beast, Sceptile's leaves are as strong as swords and capable of cutting down thick trees. While the former rings true in gameplay, the latter is somewhat misleading, as Sceptile is primarily a special attacker. For some reason though, it has a largely physical moveset, leaving it lacking in powerful offensive options. The main reason it's not any lower is because of its mega evolution, giving it a bit of an edge. Mega Sceptile gains the Dragon type, and its special offensive power goes through the roof. It still suffers from a lack of good options, but it's certainly an improvement. Next up, in the red corner, we have Incineroar. This heel wrestler has the strength its large muscles imply, not to mention its decent bulk as well. It can shoot flames reaching 3600 degrees out of its belt. It even has a great offensive move pool and a good ability in Intimidate. So what's the problem? The problem is, of course, speed. Incineroar has a rather poor speed stat of 60, but luckily it can dish out some damage before it goes down. Its signature move, Darkest Lariat, is rather situational, and it's better just carrying Knockout. Another weakness of Incineroar is that it's weak to the nigh omnipresent Stealth Rock, like most fire types. While Heavy Duty Boots helps with this, it will still suffer if the boots get knocked off. It should also be noted that Incineroar's strengths work in its favor much more in double battles, since Intimidate is affecting twice as many opponents at the same time. Treading onwards, we have one of the original three, Blastoise. Its cannons are strong enough to puncture steel and accurate enough to strike empty cans 160 feet away. Blastoise has a small niche in being the fastest Pokemon to learn Shell Smash, but it still has a good chance of getting out sped and taking a hit before getting a Shell Smash going. Luckily, Blastoise can at least take a hit. Its real strength lies 
lies in Mega Evolution. Although Mega Blastoise has never been in a generation where Blastoise can learn Shell Smash, it makes up for it in its Mega Launcher ability, increasing the damage of moves like Dark Pulse and Aura Sphere by a whopping 50%. It still suffers a bit from Mega Evolution not improving its speed at all, but regardless, it's a big improvement. Now, here's a bit of an interesting case. We've decided to list Eevee and its evolutions in a single spot as a sort of indicator of how good they can be. Now, we understand you can't evolve your Eevee in Let's Go Eevee, but we figured it would be interesting to include the evolutions because of how unique they are. Eevee is also the starter for your rival in Pokemon Yellow, which evolves during his journey. Of course, if we were listing them individually, Flareon would be right near the bottom. As the starter in Pokemon XD, it is capable of evolving into a variety of forms. While none of them are particularly great, it ranks high for versatility, with the current metagame leaning more towards Umbreon's support abilities. Meanwhile, in Let's Go Eevee, the evolution Pokemon got a variety of buffs even though the partner Eevee is incapable of evolving. It got plus 20 to all stats except for HP, which got plus 10, and it can learn powerful moves with the types of its evolutions. Such moves include an always accurate return, the most powerful draining move that doesn't require the opponent to be asleep, an attack combined with heal bell, moves that always inflict statuses upon hit, and the creatively named Batty Bad, which puts up reflect while attacking. This can be combined with its light screen equivalent to make Eevee good at setting up. With all that said, however, the Let's Go games don't have much of a competitive scene, so these strengths don't have too much of a point, but we tried our best to rank them at least contextually. Next up, we have Delphox. While its competitive prowess is not good on its own, Delphox gets here on the merits of its Pokedex entries. It's capable of controlling a fiery vortex of 5400 degrees, which is around double the melting point of steel. As such, it's no surprise Delphox has high special stats. Its speed is also good, but being a fire type with a poor physical defense leaves it very vulnerable thanks to Stealth Rock. And unlike Incineroar, Delphox doesn't have the luxury of being in a generation with heavy duty boots. But it's vast move pool and good typing allows it to do things that other fire types have trouble with. Gracefully dancing into our next spot is Primarina. Its type combination of water and fairy is great both offensively and defensively. In addition, it can learn a variety of moves to cover its weaknesses. Its main problem is, once again, speed, leaving it too slow to act first against many of its more dangerous foes. That said, we still rank it this high due to its sheer versatility and the ability to break through many defensive Pokemon. Next up, we have Feraligator. It can move fast on all fours and kill its prey with a simple bite and shake. In a fight, its sheer force ability is one of its greatest assets, boosting the power of its moves with additional effects while removing those effects. The other great thing for Alligator has going for it is its access to several powerful stat boosting moves, such as Sword Dance, Dragon Dance, and Agility. The only thing holding it back is its relatively mediocre stat line once you look past its offensive power. Its low speed in particular leaves the player with a choice. Run Dragon Dance and risk being outsped by Pokemon that are faster than Feraligator, even with a 50% speed boost, or run Agility and sacrifice offensive power. While it does have tricks to make switching in unsafe for many electric types, the same can't be said for grass types with many common ones being able to take an Ice Punch boosted by both Dragon Dance and a Light Orb. Still, its strengths managed to keep it this high on our list. Coming into our next spot with its rather low 60 speed, we have Empoleon. It is capable of swimming as fast as a jet ski and cutting through an ice flow with its wings. For the unaware, that means it's capable of cutting through 20 meter wide chunks of ice at the very minimum. In battle, it has good bulk supported by its type combination of water and steel, and can learn a variety of useful utility moves such as Stealth Rock and Defog. Unfortunately, it can't put all of its good moves to use due to the limited move slots, and it can't do much other than provide utility, but that still is a very useful purpose. Wrapping up our middle tier, Venusaur surprisingly has a higher speed stat than the Pokemon that's as fast as a jet ski, despite being weighed down by the large flower on its back. While Venusaur itself would have likely placed a few spots lower, Mega Venusaur more than makes up for that. Sun rays fill this Pokemon's body with power, and Mega Evolution gives it a stronger back and legs to support the aforementioned large flower, which grows even larger. 
The Thick Fat ability effectively cuts Mega Venusaur's weaknesses in half, and couples well with its great bulk. While it can't keep up a stall game for long, due to Synthesis having only 8 PP, and being reliant on the weather not being rain or sandstorm, it can still keep up its stall game while also packing a bit of a punch to take out opponents. Now we move on to the starter Pokemon considered strong, often due to a combination of their Pokedex entries and their competitive prowess. These are the strong. You may find somewhere around 100 Pokemon faster than it, but Infernape has a lot going for it when it comes to speed. Infernape has a unique fighting style using all its limbs and tosses enemies around with its immense agility. All of this is certainly backed up by its powerful and balanced defensive stats, plus a move set that contains powerful moves, physical and special alike. The only reason it isn't higher is because of its lack of staying power, due to low defenses and many of its best moves having some sort of risk to them, such as Flare Blitz's recoil damage, or the low accuracy of its many special moves. Coming in next, with nothing but sheer power to its name, is Chestnut. This thing is capable of toppling a 50-ton tank with a tackle, and considering it can learn many moves that are much stronger than tackle, it's safe to say that that isn't the limit of its power. It also has the ability Bulletproof, making it immune to moves classified as ballistic. Despite its powerful attack, Chestnut is primarily used to set up spikes, while taking hits due to its access to Synthesis and Drain Punch, helping it stay standing. While it faces competition in its role from faster Pokemon, it can still fulfill the niche it has, as long as it's not within breathing range of a flying-type move. Next, we get to Rillaboom. While its Pokedex entries don't speak for its strength, there are many other things that do. Its ability, Grassy Surge, and its signature move, Grassy Glide, combine together very well, effectively giving it a 70 power priority move, running off both same type attack bonus and the 30% boost provided by Grassy Terrain. This can be potentially deadly, hitting foes for massive damage before they get the chance to act. Rillaboom isn't quite a one-trick pony either, it can learn a good variety of moves such as Sword Dance and U-Turn. While it does struggle against Pokemon that resist its main trick, and the Tapus can set their own terrains over grassy terrain, said main trick is good enough to earn Rillaboom its placement this high up our list. Slithering into our next spot is Superior. It is capable of stopping its opponent's moves with a glare and boost itself internally using solar energy. While superior stats, other than speed, are quite poor, it more than makes up for its lack of offense with its ability Contrary, which inverts any stat buffs or debuffs. This ability gives superior access to a powerful Leaf Storm that increases special attack by two stages every time it's used. Contrary also does wonders against the menace that is Sticky Web. Additionally, it gets access to a variety of defensive options, such as Substitute, Leech Seed, and the aforementioned Glare. Superior's speed is another one of its important assets, being high enough to outspeed many prevalent Pokemon. Its main flaw is its need to snowball in order to get to the point where it's as powerful as it can be, but generally speaking, it's worth a bit of hassle. Armed and ready, next up is Swampert. This massive mudfish is strong enough to tow a large ship and can swim as fast as a jet ski. Swampert has had a solid track record in competitive play, helped a lot by its Mega Evolution, making it a dangerously powerful rain sweeper. While Mega Swampert is incredibly dangerous in the rain, with its 150 attack, other water types and the occasional grass type put a hamper on its strength. And if rain is removed, there isn't much Mega Swampert can do. When those threats aren't around, Mega Swampert can be a massive danger. Even with Mega Evolution being removed in Sword and Shield, Swampert still managed to find its footing as a slow pivot, abusing the move Flip Turn to switch out after the opponent has already attacked. Its case is only helped by its access to Stealth Rock. Finally, we've reached the pinnacle. These Pokemon either have immense power as described in their Pokedex entries, or have been great enough competitively to be outright banned at one point or another. These are the most powerful. Erupting into fifth place is Typhlosion. This Pokemon's firepower is immense, capable of burning everything to cinders and causing large explosions. When at the peak of its rage, anything Typhlosion touches goes up in flames. The only thing holding Typhlosion back from being any higher on this list is its lackluster in-game performance. 
In fact, if only in-game performance were taken into account, Typhlosion would likely be bottom 5 instead of top 5. While it does theoretically have access to solid speed combined with Eruption, it lacks any form of versatility, with its best option being the infamously unreliable Focus Blast. Still, its sheer power within the lore is nothing to sneeze at, earning it a spot right here. You may have heard the legends of the undefeated champion Leon and his unbeatable Charizard, and those legends are not exaggerated. Just like Typhlosion, Charizard has immense firepower, being capable of melting anything. Unlike Typhlosion, it can fly up to an altitude of 1.4 kilometers, or 4,600 feet. While its flying type is certainly a disadvantage that makes it particularly susceptible to Stealth Rock, Charizard more than makes up for that with not one, but two Mega Evolutions. Mega Charizard X is a power Powerful mixed attacker with near unresistant stab, while Mega Charizard Y is an immensely strong special attacker with the drought ability. They may have their own individual weaknesses, but just using Charizard is forcing your opponent into a sadistic guessing game if they didn't bring Toxapex, one of the few Pokemon capable of threatening both forms. While Charizard's usefulness may have tanked with Sword and Shield removing Mega Evolution, it still sees some niche use as a Sunsweeper here and there. Our Bronze Medal of Power goes to the first Pokemon on this list to be outright banned at one point, Blaziken. Capable of leaping over a 30-story building, its wrist burns hotter the stronger its opponent is. While it looks like it would have trouble hitting hard and fast on paper, it has the speed boost ability, making it get faster every turn. Not only that, but it outclasses other speed boost users in nearly every way. The fire and fighting type combination may seem overused, but it's still an excellent offensive type combination. Not to mention its Mega Evolution, making it even more powerful while it keeps its amazing ability. Mega Blaziken's style isn't too different either, just making it all around better. This Pokemon may have fallen victim to power creep in Sword and Shield, but it still retains its air of credibility. Taking our Silver Medal of Power, we have Cinderace. With alleged prowess both offensively and defensively, Cinderace is blessed with the Libero ability, allowing it to change its type to that of whatever move it used last. This ability is immensely helpful with its high attack, good physical move pool, and high speed. It also carries this signature move, Pyro Ball, which is incredibly powerful for a move with only a few minor weaknesses. That's not its only signature move either, as it also knows Court Change, a move that swaps the hazards on each side of the field. The new item, known as Heavy Duty Boots, allows it to do this safely, in addition to being a great help against Stealth Rock anyway. While it has been unbanned a few times, it was always banned again eventually, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. In fact, Cinderace can be considered on par with our top spot. Speaking of which, sneaking into our gold medal spot is Greninja. With its water shuriken, it is capable of splitting metal into two. In gameplay, it gets the incredibly useful protein ability, which functions identically to Libero, turning it into a massively unpredictable and versatile glass cannon. Helping it along is its high speed, allowing it to perform its shenanigans before the opponent can act. Greninja wouldn't be where it's at without its move pool either as it can be used physically, specially, or for utility purposes. While Power Creep did catch up to it a bit, it got a bit of a treat in the form of the Battle Bond ability, allowing it to transform into Ash Greninja if it gets a KO, increasing its offensive power immensely, which gives it even more unpredictability, earning it our Gold Medal of Power. And that's our list of every starter Pokemon Final Evolution, ranked from weakest to most powerful. But let us know if you agree, or just tell us who your favorite starter is. And be sure to hit that notification bell so you can binge our other Pokemon videos right when they come out. Thanks for watching.